Healthy soil is the first step to a healthy productive garden. It can make all the difference in the health of your plants. Preparing your soil before you plant is one of the best things you can do to ensure the success of your garden. And in today's video, I'm going to give you some practical steps that you can go through to ensure that your soil is ready to go for next season. I'm Angela from Growing in the Garden. I garden in Mesa, Arizona in Zone 9B. I love sharing garden tips and inspiration so you can be successful in your garden. The first step is if you're gardening in raised beds to take a good look at your raised beds. Check the condition of your beds. It's not worth it to spend a lot of effort on getting your soil ready if your beds are falling apart. So take some time at the beginning of the season to ensure that your raised beds are ready to go. If they need repairs, make them. If you need to upgrade or update your watering system, if there's leaks, fix those leaks. Get the basics of what you're going to garden in and how you're going to water it dialed in before you shift that focus to what's inside the beds. The next step is to take a good look at the existing soil in your beds. Has that soil level dropped significantly? It probably has. Hopefully you have a lot of organic matter in your soil and as that organic matter breaks down, that means the soil level in your garden is going down. That is akin to your tank in your car being on empty. It's time to fill that bed back up. I like to fill my raised beds with a mixture of a few ingredients, including compost, vermiculite or perlite, and coconut core. That is the perfect mixture to give your raised beds a light and airy mixture that is excellent for gardening in. Over time, that compost is definitely going to break down and some of the other ingredients will break down, but they'll take a little bit longer. So take a good look at the soil that's left in your beds. Is it still light and easy to work with? Then you may just need to fill that bed back up with compost. If the texture is changing and getting more compact, you may need more raised bed mix, which is a combination of those ingredients. Think about the soil and the production from that bed last season. Was there good production? Did you struggle a lot with things like pests or diseases or weeds? If so, now is the time to address those issues. If there are existing weeds in the bed, pull those weeds out. If you have persistent weeds like Bermuda grass coming up through your beds, while there aren't any plants in the bed is the best time to address those issues. If persistent pests or diseases were issues, take note of what they were and make sure that you are rotating which types of crops that you're planting in that bed and planting crops that are less susceptible to those pests and diseases. If you've had a major squash bug infestation, you will want to take a break from growing that squash family in that raised bed. If your tomatoes really struggled and had disease, this is not the season to add in new tomatoes into that bed. It's always a good idea to have your soil tested at the beginning of the season. Soil testing has gotten so simple. It really is as easy as buying a kit online, filling it up with soil from your beds and dropping it in the mailbox. Within a few days, you can see your results online and then you will know exactly what is going on with that soil in your beds and you'll know what you need to add. A soil test is going to measure for nutrient deficiencies and give you your soil's pH levels, which are really important. Here in the low desert, our pH levels can get really high, really alkaline because of the high alkalinity of the water. Keeping an eye on that pH level and your nutrient levels by having a soil test is key to having a successful garden. Now that you've taken a good look at the soil in your existing beds, the best thing you can do for your bed is to add a thick layer of compost to that bed. Don't be afraid to fill that bed all the way back up. Filling your beds all the way up takes advantage of all of that space in your raised beds and makes that available as nutrients for your plants. Adding compost each season is an important part of getting your soil ready for planting. If you have a thick layer of mulch, pull back the mulch first and then add a layer of compost to the top of the soil. If the mulch has mostly broken down, it's okay to add the compost right on top of that mulch. 
There's no need to mix it into the soil or to dig it in or anything like that. Those microbes in the soil are going to start breaking down that organic matter simply by having it on top of the soil. It's easier for you and better for the garden if you don't dig it in. Which kind of compost should you use? The best compost is always the one that you make yourself. The next best compost is from a trusted local supplier. I love to get my additional compost from Arizona Worm Farm. If locally sourced compost isn't an option, bagged compost is fine. Try and get a variety of different types of compost. The next thing I like to do to get my beds ready for planting is to add worm castings to the soil. Like compost, worm castings have amazing benefits for your soil. The easiest way to have healthy worm castings available for your beds is to install vermicomposting bins in your beds. That gives your beds a steady supply of worm castings. So if you don't have in-bed vermicomposting bins, or even if you do, you may want to add some additional worm castings to your bed each season. How much worm casting should you add each season? About one pound for every 40 square feet. If you are adding new soil for a new raised bed, aim to have about 5% total worm castings in each bed. And that may be all you need to add to your beds. Hopefully you have a lot of organic matter and things are growing well and that soil is going to get better season after season. Often your first season of gardening is the worst because your soil hasn't had enough time to create that wonderful ecosystem below the ground. If you got your soil tested, you'll know exactly what else you need to add based on your soil test. It's easy to get confused and be overwhelmed by all of the different things that you feel like you should be adding to your soil. Focus on the basics of practicing organic gardening principles, adding organic matter, adding worm castings to your soil, and you'll have a healthy and productive garden. Thank you so much for watching.